birds. Wow. What are the birds doing? I used to say that the that I used to say that they they spread they're spreading kindness. Oh, that's really sweet. They're beautiful, look, aren't they? Look behind you. The moon. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, but moon. Hey. So we're just out on an evening stroll, and we're going to walk through the field. That's the whole field. That is a big field, isn't it? It is a big field. But we can walk through it without even getting tired. I know. We've got really strong legs, haven't we? Yeah, that's why. That's because my my arm is all way over there. <laughs> and uh, we've just been thinking about alternatives to punishment, haven't we? Because we've just had some stuff come up. That's um. Mum. Yeah. When you get home, I'm gonna do a video about you. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, we've been thinking about some alternatives to punishment, and what you can do instead of you know sending your child to a room or doing a timeout or something. Um, yeah. Timeouts. How How do you feel if you you're having a timeout? <laughs> no. It's true. How would you feel if someone was giving you a time out? I wouldn't like it. I would that's prefer... How, that's how the children feel. <laughs> I'm sure I would prefer it if someone spoke to me with compassion and gave me love in a time that I was struggling. Because basically that's how I see it. I, that's how I see a child who is misbehaving. They are struggling with the world. They are upset. And that's the first step, is actually seeing, seeing the, um, the feelings behind the behaviour. So for example, if your child is angry and kicking and hitting and biting, why don't just see the kicking, the hitting and biting. We see that there is an unhappy child there. There is a reason why the child is hitting and biting and kicking. And that's what I address first, is the feelings. Wow, these birds. I don't know if you can see them. With starlings in the air. And that's the first thing that I address. What are those? They're birds. Watch them, they're doing a, like a dance in the air. Oh, aren't they beautiful, those birds? They're doing an amazing little dance. Oh, well, I thought they were bats. No. So that's the first thing I do is I see the the feelings behind the that I see the feelings behind the behaviours and address those. So um, and there's no harm in taking your child out of the scenario. So, like, if my child was kicking someone else, I would move them away from that situation. Um, I wouldn't be putting them in, like, a confined area or anything. It would just be taking them out of the situation so no one else can get hurt. Mom, Mom, that really wow. Wow. And I would explain that it's not okay to hit, it's not okay to hurt. And um, then I would move on to empathy with the child and I would explain how would you feel if someone was kicking you? Would you like that? And then they would, no, I, I don't like to be hit. Say, so, well, you've, it's important to respect other people's feelings too. And um, if you're upset, if you're angry, find another way to show it. Say, I want to see how angry you are. Your feelings are important to me. We, we need to find another way to show it and you can find an alternative way which would be something like can you hit the pillow rip up this piece of paper scribble on this piece of paper um when they're older they can explain in words and just yeah explain that feel it's, it's not okay to hit it's not okay to hurt find another way to show me show me your feelings because your feelings are important and then talk through it with them Obviously, this is um, different with age appropriate. This is, you've got to be age appropriate with this. So, if that if your child is two years old, there's no point in sitting down and having a deep, long conversation about it because your child don't get it. So, when they're two and they're hitting and kicking and biting, know that it's just a phase. It really is. My daughter went through it as well, and she used to bite horrendously. Um, but, and I never punished her, never sent her to a room or anything like that. Wow. These birds. That's amazing. That's amazing. 
What a time to come out for the evening. These birds are incredible. I keep getting distracted, sorry. Um, they're just doing like a beautiful aerial display. It's amazing. Um, yeah, so... So yeah, if they're two years old, it is, it is a phase. Um, so I've never pun punished my child and she has still grown out of that phase. So it really is just a phase. It's, it's them getting frustrated with the world, not understanding it, not having the brain, the literally the part of their brain developed to rationalise their emotions. So they just lash out. Wow. Wow. So yeah, kids just lash out. So it's important to just know that it's a phase. Stay loving and calm and help them through it and take them out of the situation. Yeah? My friend likes shooting the birds to fly. Well, how do you feel about that? I'm like, oh, can you please stop chasing them? Yeah. He's like, Oh, uh, oh, we like seeing the birds fly. Aww. So chase them. You'd prefer that he didn't chase the birds? I would just ask them. You'd just ask, ask him. Oh, It's really no, lovely you stay no, up for he, birds. No, no, oh, he just ask the birds. Oh. Oh, my God. Uh, so... Yeah, if you've got like a two-year-old child who's hitting and kicking and biting, just remove them from the situation and calm them down, basically, by giving them cuddles and kisses. And you're not actually saying that it's okay to hit, because you can say to them, it's not okay to hurt. It's not okay to hurt. But you can still give them a cuddle and be there for them emotionally. So it's setting boundaries with your, with your words and with your relationship with your child. Because like I've said in previous videos, if you... You've got to work on your relationship with your child, basically. And if you um, oh, if you have a good relationship where you care about their feelings, they will care about your feelings. I and really they will look up to you. What's the matter? I wish I'd run the flashlight. Oh, yeah. Because we, we can't see in the woods. Oh, and I don't think we'll go in the woods now. It's really no. dark. Okay. Just have a nice walk around the field. You've got to build up a bond with your children and they will understand you so much more and it's just being kind of consistent with that so as you go through the years you always care about their feelings and then when they get to this age about five years old they care about your feelings too so all you have to say if something happens is i feel really upset about this and that's usually enough more than enough in my case to actually have your child understand that something has happened that you do not approve of and that's how you set the boundaries, with a, with a strong relationship and a strong bond. And it's so easy now, like I wouldn't even think about sending her to her room or anything like that. There's just no need. There's absolutely no need because all I need to do is just say, I'm really upset by this. I, f I, I feel hurt. I don't like it. And that is enough for her to feel like, oh my gosh, something's happened. I, 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 and in, in more cases, she feels so bad, so bad that I even have to remind her that you are not a bad person at all. Just because you've upset me doesn't make you a bad person. And Baba, what do we do if something's happened that where you've upset someone else, what do you do? What's the first thing we do? Admit. Admit it, that's right. The first thing we do is admit that we have made a mistake, that we've done something wrong. What's the second thing we do? Forgive. Yes, we forgive ourselves for making that mistake. And what else do we do? We, we make them feel better. Help them. We help them, so we help them feel better. Admit, forgive, and help the, each other. Yes. That's, that's my way, and, okay. that's your, and that's your way. And I think I'm gonna continue this video another time because it's getting really dark now. <laughs> So just to conclude on the video that I made yesterday, um, basically it's so important to just see the feelings, see the emotions through the behaviour and try to address them as well as the behaviour. Of course we say to our children, and we can say this in a stern voice, we can still be gentle parents but speak 
sternly. You don't have to shout, you don't have to yell, you don't have to attack their character by calling them naughty or rude or terrible because we don't want to we don't want our children to feel like they are naughty children we don't want our children to start believing that they are bad because then they will start acting bad we want our children to believe that they are good kind amazing people and that they just made a mistake and that mistakes are just chances to learn and it's just really good to start this perspective with children young and to continue it up and um so if your child is biting, kicking, hitting, we want to address the feelings. So we want to sit, see, I can see you're really frustrated with this. Something is making you so upset, so upset that you want to hurt someone else. And it's not okay to hurt. And like I said, say it sternly, it is not okay to hurt. But I'm here for you. I can see that you're struggling with something and I love you and I'm here for you. I think that's so much stronger. You're because you, you're, you're setting boundaries and you're building a bond with your child at the same time. And you're helping them to feel like they are worthy of love, that they are lovable, even when they're upset, even when they're lashing out, that they are still lovable and that you love them and that, they, that you believe in them. Because I know that whenever I've done things, self-destructive things in my life, having someone believe in me, believe that, I was able to come through that and that I was kind of better than my behaviour actually helped me. Someone believed in me, but if, if someone completely lost hope in me, it was like, you know what, you're just worthless, you're just nothing. I would have felt so low that I would have started to believe that. And we don't want our children to start to believe that they are bad, that they are, that they are mean people, that they are rude. We don't want to attack their character. So it's really important when we are... Um, helping our children with their emotions that we don't attack their character but we can address their behavior and be there for them um, be there for their emotions so that's what i do and that's what i find is really really powerful in actually getting everything you want basically you, you're stopping the behavior that you don't want you're and like that's helping other people not get hurt you're teaching your chi child boundaries um, but you're also building a bond with them and at the same time you're building them up You're helping build up build up their character inside so that they believe that they're a good person Something I say to my ch to my child When she is unkind to someone else. I say to her that I know that you are a kind person I know that you are a kind person. You're just forgetting how to show it So her, I'm addressing that her character is good and kind and loving and but at the same time, I'm addressing the fact that what she did was not true to herself. It's not true to her character. And I'll be there for her. I'll give her cuddles. I will help her. Oh, this is a kinder way to say it. And give her an example of a kinder way to say it. And I always think there's always a nice way to say something to someone. And I, I believe this with parenting especially. There's always a nice way to speak to our children. And I lose my temper so much. So don't think that I'm always so kind and sweet and gentle. I forget how to speak gently to my child. And I address that with her and say, I'm so sorry, I'm not feeling gentle right now. And I will leave the room and I will try and calm down and then I'll come back to the situation. And I'll say, look, I'm really sorry. I lost my temper. I know that I am a kind person, but I forgot how to speak kindly. And that's such a good example to our children to actually show that adults make mistakes too. But we're all just learning. We're all just learning. And I say this to my child, we're all just learning. We're all just trying to do our best. And sometimes we make mistakes. And that's when what I started speaking about yesterday comes into play. That's when we start to, um, we admit we made a mistake. Uh, we forgive ourselves. But we don't hold on to that, we just, like, I made a mistake, I admit that, I let go, and we address the person that we have hurt, if we've hurt anyone else, and we help them. We help make, this, help make the situation better if we can. And apologise if we feel sorry, that's another thing, I don't force her to apologise. I, um, I might prompt her and say, oh, if you're sorry, you might want to apologise. I might always say to her, don't say sorry if you don't mean it, because I don't want her to think that a sorry is just sorry, 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 it's not, it's, I'm sorry, I did something that I wish I didn't do, and I'm sorry, I want her sorries to, to come from her, 
So prompt her, so, oh, you might want to say sorry if you feel sorry, but if you feel sorry is the key for that. It's all about building them up, addressing the behaviour, and being there for them emotionally. Um, and yeah, when I like to say that I, I make mistakes too. Like, I think that is just so important. And to actually recognise that, that like, we're expecting a four-year-old child, or even younger, we're expecting children to remember how to speak kindly all the time. And they're way more emotionally unstable than we should be, if you know what I mean. Because like, we've had all, the, all our lives to practice speaking kindly. And they're just learning how to speak kindly. They're just learning how to manage their emotions. And we're putting really, really high expectations, ex expectations that we can't even meet onto our children. And that's another thing, is that it's really important to actually have age appropriate expectations on children and just appropriate expectations full stop. Because so many of us, we, we do, we expect our children to be able to do this, 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 and never be tired and never be grumpy and never be grouchy. And we are grumpy and grouchy sometimes. We are stressed sometimes. And what's going on in a child's world is stressful too. They have such little control over so much. And they're trying to manage emotions while their brains are developing, while they're learning about the world. And then there's additional stress when children are starting to go to school and they've got tests and then they've got peer groups to, to contend with. And everything's changing, everything's going so fast, they've got pressure on them. And then additionally, they've got pressure from their parents. That they can never be sad, they can never cry, they can never scream, they can never just say, do you know what, I've had enough. They can never show their frustration. I mean, how much of a burden is that, that we're putting on our children if we can't even let them show how frustrated this world is or show how, how upset they are? And that is so important that you are their safe place that they can you know, come, come to and say, do you know what, oh, I'm so upset right now. I'm, I'm so upset about all these things that are happening. And you're there for them and you don't judge them and don't say, oh, stop being upset. Stop being upset. I can't handle your upset. We need to be open to our children and, and loving and ready for their emotions and be there emotionally. You can just sit with them. Sometimes you don't even need to do anything, but just acknowledge their feelings. Like, oh, you're feeling so upset right now. You're feeling so stressed. You're feeling so, so angry that you even want to break your own toy. You've just thrown your toy over the room. Over the room. That's how angry you are wow that, that is really angry i mean throwing that across the top throwing that across the room might break it so just letting you know if you throw your toy it might break but i'm here for you i'm here for a cuddle if you need me that's what i do i just and i give her information like that so and that's another thing it's the natural consequence i give her so it's not like a threat like if you throw your toy over the room i'm going to take it off you i don't say that i say if you throw your toy across the room it might break and it's your toy and that's something you care about. So I'll highlight the consequence, the natural consequence, which is relevant to that situation. And I will explain that, yeah, that's the reason why I don't need to do it. So if she started, for example, yeah, we've actually got very thin windows in my living room. And if she bangs on them, it's, I do worry that they will break because they're in a very thin layer and um, it's a really big window. So I don't want it to crack or anything. So I would give information like that. It's not, don't bang that window, don't bang that window. Oh, I'll explain why. I'll explain. If you bang that window really hard, the window could smash. And if the window smashes, then it's going to, we'll have to get it fixed and then it'll be really cold in here and we won't be able to come in the front room. And it's just giving information that is relevant to that situation and really explaining things for children because they don't understand. You, we're giving unrealistic expectations that children know exactly what's going to happen with every single consequence that they do and that's, that's not how it is. Children don't understand the consequence. Half the time they're just going la 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 la, doing this, doing that, this is fun, life is fun and they're not thinking about what's going to happen and that's why we as parents help them understand exactly what's going to happen and just treat them with respect and understanding that they're new on this planet. I always find it really funny because it's like, it's like someone's just dropped an alien on the planet and they have no idea what's going on and they're like, it's Christmas. What's, what's this, oh, what is this tree? What, like, you, you call it a tree? What is it? And I find that hilarious and like amazing that 
they just don't even know what's going on. So introduce them to what, ah, this is what this is, and this is what happens when that happens, and this might happen if that happens, and just have fun and explain the world to our children and give as much information as possible and explain why you don't want things to happen because that's so important. And then you're like, you're on the same team. And then the child understands why to do it. It's not just, no, no, don't, 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 don't. Naughty, naughty behaviour, naughty behaviour. What do you mean naughty behaviour? Explain. You're not a naughty person. You just don't understand what's going on. <laughs> you just don't understand what will happen if you do that. It's very, very, very rare that a child will actually do something intentionally to actually <sighs> upset you. Usually we're just getting upset with children because we're putting unrealistic expectations on their behaviour and we don't, and we haven't explained the situation to them or we're reacting to their, their upset emotions because we're feeling so emotionally unstable that we can't handle their emotions. So it's really important to just like quit blaming children all the time because you don't know what's going on. You don't understand the world, do you? No, no. You don't understand the world. I don't know all. You don't know all the things, but I don't know all the things either, do I? Oh, oh you okay? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Good time. Yeah. So I'm sorry. It's fine. Do you forgive me? I always do. <laughs> Look. Mm. Blend yeah. into your skin. Oh, yeah. So it's just really important to just... Yeah. Be realistic with children, give them loads of information on the consequence of their actions. Tell them what behaviour you accept or not, so it's not okay to hit, it's not okay to hurt. Give empathy with them, so it's like, how would you feel if someone hit you? And they'll, I wouldn't like it. Well then, it's important to treat others how you like to be treated. And to them, give them empathy for their feelings as well. It's like, oh, I know how frustrating it can feel when, think, when you don't win the game. It can feel really frustrating. Oh, you're and you're really upset about it. It means a lot to you. I can see how much it means to you. Means Things like lot. this. Think that's just the sort of thing that I would say. Like if you lost the game, I would say, and you threw the game across the room, say, oh, you feel really, really upset about that. I don't like that you've thrown the things because now there's a big mess on the floor. Oh, they might. And the game's all m m messed up. And the game's broken. Yeah. I say, well, I'm not happy about that. And I would like, if you, if you feel cross about losing the game, find a different way to show me how cross you are. Like maybe stamp your feet, but don't throw the game, because that might hurt it. So, don't throw the game, because that might break it. So, they're the sort of things, but give a cuddle. I'm here, for, I'm here to cuddle you. I'm here for you. If you... If you need me, if you want a cuddle, because I can see how upset you are and I love you. So they're just a few ideas. I hope I've covered everything. I'm sure there's more things I do in the moment, but I just can't really think of them all at this moment in time. So I'm going to say goodbye now and say thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe if you want to. And I will see you on the next video. Hey, I wanna do it. Oh, go and press it.